Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and today I'm back with another travel video. It has been so long since I've been on an airplane, and today I'm excited to board one because as you see here, it is cloudy in Seattle, but I am heading down to beautiful Phoenix, Arizona. And the reason why I'm going to Phoenix, Arizona is because my wife is going to a real estate conference and I am going to just tag along. And so while she's doing that during the day, I will be in the car game hunting all around that area, as well as taking in some sightseeing. Oh man, it has been too long and I'm really excited. So in this video, I'm gonna show you, I think I go to about five different places, all recommended by you guys, by the way. You guys did not disappoint with the recommendations here. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you all of the things I picked up. And by the way, you guys always ask what handhelds I bring with me to keep me entertained while traveling. And for this video, I wasn't entirely sure how much free time I would have, so I kept it pretty simple. So I have the Switch and I also have my iPad. And so for the Switch, I brought a mix of 10 physical games. Some games I'm already playing and some games I'm hoping to check out when I have some free time. Uh, vacation's always really good for that. So it's a mix of really everything from shooters to some extreme sports games to some multiplayer games racing games you get hades there uh, skyrim's always a kind of a classic for me because i'm way into that as well and it's always fun to play it on switch but as you see i'm zooming in on kingdoms of amalur re-reckoning and the reason why i'm doing that is because that's the game that got played the most but the thing is it wasn't me who was playing it it was actually my wife. My wife loves this game, and so she played this game pretty much every free moment that she had. And uh, yeah, it's definitely a really fun game if you haven't played it. It's a great RPG, uh, very easy to get into. And so because my wife is playing the Switch, I was playing this new game on my iPad called Fantasian. That is by Mistwalker, uh, the original programmers and developers for the Final Fantasy series. And uh, it's basically, you know, kind of like if they continued to make that classic PlayStation 1 Final Fantasy series, uh, but again, on the iPad or your iPhone. So uh, really loving that game, playing it quite a bit. Now, I've been to Phoenix a couple times when I was invited to the Game On Expo. So I knew what to expect when we got here. My wife has never been here before and, you know, when you walk off that plane, you are just smacked in the face with dry desert heat. It was a beautiful day and I was so ready for it. And we hopped in the car and headed to our hotel. Waking up the next morning, oh man, look at this view. Again, I, <laughs> I know I live in a really beautiful part of the country in Seattle, don't get me wrong. But also one of the fun things about traveling is just you know, seeing how other people live. And it's so wild to me that people wake up in Phoenix, Arizona to just gorgeous blue skies. It's warm weather. And uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is a great start to my morning. And I'm especially excited today because I'm gonna be meeting with my good buddy, Jason Heine. He and I used to be part of the All Gen Gamers podcast. And so, uh, I asked him if he wanted to meet up with me and do some game hunting. Of course he said yes. So I'm racing over to meet up with Jason. So the first place we're gonna check out is called Fallout Games. Now, you guys actually came up the list of places I should check out when I visit the Phoenix area. And so when I walked through here, well, <laughs> I had a bit of a surreal moment and I swear this wasn't planned, but first of all, I didn't tell anybody that we were gonna be showing up at any of these stores. And when I walked in here, look what they're playing on the television. And it was so funny. I swear this was not planned in any way. We, uh, me and also the guy behind the counter were laughing about it. Uh, also, there was a guy in the store who heard my voice on the TV and also in the store and like did a double take, you know? It was pretty funny because obviously, you guys mostly know me because I talk about Seattle all the time. And so when you're thousands of miles away, nobody expects, you know, me to walk through the door. So yeah, it was definitely a very funny moment, but I was definitely impressed by this place. It is a good first impressions. And again, I didn't know what to expect coming down here. And as you can see, this place is just really well stocked. 
You know, I've gone to other places in other cities before and been like, you know, kind of disappointed because they just don't have a lot. That was not the case here at Fallout Games. They were packed to the gills with stuff, both on the shelves, also in the glass, behind the counter. Uh, they just had a ton of stuff. I was like, wow, okay, uh, Phoenix ain't messing around. You know, it's funny, some things really stood out. And one thing I saw immediately, which I just thought was really weird, were all of these N-Gage games. I never see N-Gage games anymore. <laughs> I don't know why. I mean, well, I know I know why, because it was a failed system. But, and it's, again, don't get me wrong, it's not something I collect for, but I love seeing weird stuff like that. To like, wow, somebody must have, like, traded in their entire N-Gage collection, which is hilarious to me. Yeah, although it does kind of make me tempted to collect for it. Because there is one game that I actually do want for the N-Gage, but uh, we'll get to that in a bit. Another thing I noticed about this place immediately was all of the awesome kiosks that they have in here. They have the original Game Boy. They have, check this out. They have a Sega Saturn kiosk. They also have a Sega Dreamcast kiosk. Man, I just love seeing that stuff. Again, you know, I'm kind of new to collecting kiosks. I don't want to go crazy with this, but I can see why people would want to jump on these because they're getting to, you know, to be so rare, so unusual to see. And it's awesome that they have them here. They also have a lot of box systems. Again, something that you don't always see every day. Now, you know, they're gonna be expensive and not for everybody, but man, that's really cool to see. And you guys know me, I like collecting my big box PC games, so I always have to ask, and it's nice to see that they have a few here. I uh, especially like seeing those gold box SSI RPGs. Didn't really pick any of them up, nothing that really kind of grabbed my attention, but again, I like seeing them in these retro gaming stores. You don't always see that. However, I did pick up some games. Actually, I picked up games at every store that we visit, and like I said, I'll show all that at the end. But it was awesome hanging out with Jason Heine. You know, he and I kind of have this special connection, this special relationship that we had also on the podcast where he and I were just the right amount of silly. We just like to, I don't know, we just really click when we're together. And it's funny because I hadn't hung out with him in years and we just fell right back into place. He's the kind of guy where if I live closer to him, I'm pretty sure we would hang out, well, <laughs> I mean, I'd probably hang out with him every day, but you know, he's got his own life. But you know, we just have that kind of friendship and it's really awesome to uh, to hook up with the guy again. And unfortunately he has to go back to work, but don't worry, he's gonna show up tomorrow as well. So now I'm leaving Fallout Games and I'm gonna head to the closest Bookman's. Now Bookman's is a place that I hear an awful lot about. You guys talk about it every time that Arizona comes up. So I'm really excited to check it out. And this was interesting because while I went into the store, I didn't feel comfortable filming there. It's, it's because it's not a retro gaming store. It's, it's kind of like a little of everything. They have music, they have instruments, they have movies, they have all this, you know, all this stuff. And uh, that's okay because they didn't really have that much that I was looking for anyways. I did pick up a game, I'll show it at the end, but not a lot of footage here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna move on. All right, it's the next morning and another beautiful day in Phoenix, Arizona. And like I said, I'm gonna meet up with Jason Heine again. This time we're gonna be going to another place you guys recommended called One Up Games. You know, one of my favorite things about going to these retro gaming stores is that they are, pretty much independently owned mom and pop places. And because of that, each one of these has their own look and feel, their own vibe, their own energy, plus their own, uh, you know, kind of things that they do that, that are a little bit different. And this place is definitely like that because when I walked in here, again, it was like really well organized. And which is hilarious because you guys would think, oh, maybe you called ahead and let them know that you're gonna be filming. No, <laughs> I just show up with the camera and ask if it's okay if I film and they say yes. and. You know, again, it's such a joy when you're just like, wow, this place is like really well stocked and there's lots of really cool stuff here. And by the way, the owner of this place is super cool. He knew who I was and he's like, hey dude, come on the back here. I've got some big box PC games. You're gonna wanna check them out. And yeah, I did not disappoint. It's nice seeing a section there dedicated to all these big box PC games. I know not everybody's into them, but I am. Uh, and that's awesome to see. 
And then check this out, this is pretty funny. Notice the price tag there. So somebody traded this in and kept the original price tag on it, $7, not a big deal. But look at the little logo there. That's Kelsey's Pink Gorilla. We are, we're 1400 miles away from her store and somehow somebody bought this and traded it in all the way down in Phoenix, Arizona. Maybe they moved down from Seattle, I have no idea, but I thought that was pretty funny. Here's something you don't see every day. This is a TRS-80 home computer in the box. I don't think I've ever seen one of these in the box, actually. Now the box is pretty beat up and that computer is kind of yellow, but still nice to see. I also like how they have these two chairs here set up where you can just sit down and grab a controller and play against your buddy, hang out. That's pretty awesome. Another thing that they do here that I thought is pretty cool is that they have this entire rack here dedicated to old school VHS movies. And that is pretty awesome. I was actually looking through this going, oh man, I don't need another thing to collect. <laughs> but I have a warm place in my heart for these old school VHS movies. I thought that's a nice little touch. And so Jason and I are looking around, checking out some games when the owner came up to us and was like, hey, do you wanna check out the games we have in the back? Because that's the stuff that we haven't yet put out. That's the good stuff. And so, yeah, what do you think I said? Of course I said yes. So we followed him back there and yeah, they've got some really interesting stuff back here. So back here, you've got a lot of boxed NES games as well as Super Nintendo games. We've got some PS2 games in there that I hadn't seen in a while. I actually do pick up one of those. Again, I'll show you at the end of this video. Uh, some PlayStation 1 games, some ROM hacks and reproductions that they've kind of done for, for fun for the, the game on Expo. Just a lot of random stuff back here, including this like special edition of Wild Arms 3. I'd never seen this before, as well as the Japanese versions of Mr. Mosquito 1 and 2. Now we got the first game, but not the second. Uh, just kind of like a lot of oddities like this. Some, you know, North American releases, some Japanese imports, a lot of stuff that I'm not sure why they're keeping it back here right now. Maybe it's they're just waiting for room or something like that. But yeah, it was really interesting kind of picking through all this. All right, well, sadly, Jason Heine has to go back to work and that means that I am on my own again and I brought up Google Maps looking for the closest retro gaming store that I could drive to and another Fallout Games came up on the map, so I headed over to that. Now this Fallout Games is completely different than the first one we went to and as you can see here, it's because it's so much bigger. Uh, it feels almost like a warehouse. It's massive in here and again, just completely packed full of games. Now one thing that I noticed here is that they had these massive bins of loose Legos. I thought this was really interesting. The guy said actually that they sell extremely well, that people know to come in here if they're looking for, I don't know, specific Lego parts from like the, the 70s and the 80s. Uh, it's just kind of a mishmash in here, but it's just one of the extra things that they sell to kind of make money. Another thing I thought was pretty cool about this place is that they had an Atari Jaguar kiosk. Again, something that you just never see anymore. And then I noticed in their collector case, they had one of the games I'm looking for. I did not buy it because it is stupidly expensive, but it is sure cool to see. And I believe this is sealed. That's why it's so expensive. But that of course is the Elder Scrolls Travels Shadow Key on the N-Gage. Not a lot of people know that there was an official Elder Scrolls game that came out on the N-Gage phone. The only reason why I want this is because I do eventually want to have a complete Elder Scrolls collection, but I, I passed this up. I just thought it was really cool to see. Again, 220 bucks. That's probably what they go for online, so it's not an unreasonable price. But again, something you just don't see every day. And that's one thing I wanna mention if you haven't picked up on it already, and that is in the Phoenix area, they've got a ton of retro gaming stores. I gotta be honest, I had no idea. Now, again, I'm coming from Seattle. We are a little bit spoiled over here. We've got a lot of retro gaming stores, but I know that that is not the case everywhere, yet, I'm just blown away because down in the Phoenix area, they've got a ton of these stores and they're all really well stocked. They got a ton of stuff to choose from. I was, again, really impressed with their retro gaming community down here. It's, it's awesome. Moving on from Fallout Games to another recommendation that you guys had for me, and that is The Gaming Zone. This was a store, again, that I knew nothing about walking in here and 
Yeah, first impressions are, again, it's a little bit smaller than the other stores, but it had some really cool things going on here. Right off the bat, the one thing I loved about this store, and you can see them right here, is that they have these light up, I guess, marquees for the different sections. I thought that looked really professional. I'm not sure where they got those, if they were custom made or not, but the, you know, the, as you can see here, they have Nintendo, they have Xbox, they've got PlayStation. I just thought that looked really cool. That would be great for like a game room. And this store had a lot of not just games, but also accessories and plushies and toys and keychains and collectibles. Uh, again, that's not something that you see all the time. It's actually something that Kelsey does a lot too. So this store right here kind of reminded me of the International District uh, of Pink Gorilla in Seattle. And then the guy at the counter says, hey man, you should probably walk through this door here and check out our full arcade and tournament room. So I, I was like blown away. I was like, oh wow. So <laughs> again, you would have no idea from the outside that this was in here, but uh, it was all set up and working. And again, designed to just go in there and play some arcade games, do some DDR or, you know, I, I guess they hold tournaments there as well. And so again, I was just blown away by all of these retro gaming stores. And, you know, all of them were about 20 to 25 minutes away from each other at the most. Now, I'm not the best at knowing exactly where all of these, you know, these different towns or suburbs of Phoenix, how they fit all together, because it was kind of all blurred to me. But yeah, that was pretty impressive. And I'm not done yet because another place you guys told me I had to check out, there's multiple locations, is Zia Record Exchange. And yeah, that's all you had to say, basically. People are like, oh, there's video games, there's movies, and there's music. I was like, oh, hell yeah, I'm definitely going to that. And this place is pretty interesting because it is exactly how people describe it. So. When I first walked in, I turned to the right and there is an entire section dedicated to just video games of all kinds. And admittedly, it was pretty picked over. I didn't see very much there that I was really interested in, although I did get one game. Uh, but the rest of the store is books, action figures, uh, random kind of accessories and collectibles, all that sort of stuff. Uh, but then half of it is dedicated just to music and they have a massive vinyl section. So I immediately headed over there. This place definitely reminds me of a place in Seattle called Silver Platters, where again, it has a kind of almost like a warehouse vibe to it. Uh, lots of space, entire sections dedicated to different genres of music. So of course I headed over to the metal section. Um, did not get disappointed there. Actually bought a bunch of vinyl that I didn't have in my collection. And I was really surprised that they have a lot of exclusive releases specific to Zia. Uh, you see that, that there's a ghost colored vinyl here. And, and the reason why I'm surprised is because I just never heard of this chain before. Um, so it was cool to see that. And so my wife's real estate convention lasted for, I think four days total, but once it was over, uh, she booked a couple extra days on the end of that so we could drive up to Sedona, uh, check out more of beautiful Arizona, some places that we've never been before. And I gotta tell you, you know, I've seen some beautiful places. I live in a really beautiful part of the US, but Sedona took my breath away. It is, it is stunning there. And you know, when you're in Sedona, you have to go to the Grand Canyon. Again, I'd never been to the Grand Canyon before and you're so close that it was cool to just basically take a day to drive up and see it. You know, it's one of those things where you hear about it all the time, you see it in movies, but it's awesome to stand on the ridge and then just take it all in. And you know, I know people say this all the time, and it's true, video and photos just don't do it justice. Um, it really is one of the most amazing things I've ever seen in my life. I think next time what I would like to do at the Grand Canyon is maybe take one of those helicopter tours because again, it's so massive that I think you need to take a helicopter to truly get just how immense this is. Uh, you know, don't get me wrong, I was blown away by it, but once I was there, I was like, man, we should have booked that. That would have been amazing. But sadly, it is time to go home to Seattle. I've had a great time in Arizona. I was checking out the weather in Seattle and then, oh man, we're gonna go from 99 to, uh, 
like high of 60, I think, 65. So yeah, uh, it's bittersweet. I'm excited to go home and check out the games, but man, I've had a great time in Arizona. So now let's go ahead and check out some of the games that I picked up. And at Fallout Games, I picked up Legend of Zelda Triforce Heroes on the 3DS. So I've heard really good things about the co-op multiplayer on this game. I guess it is designed to be played like that. I guess it's supposed to be hilarious. Um, yeah, it looks really fun. So if you played it, uh, let me know down in the comments what you think. I also picked up Retro Atari Classics on the Nintendo DS and not really sure what this is. It's kind of a blind buy here and it looks a little bizarre because they're showing asteroids there, but it's like green or something like that. So looks like it's gonna be a mix of the original style as well as remix versions of it. Sometimes those can go either way, but we'll have to see how it goes. I've mentioned in previous videos that I'm trying to collect all of the first person shooters that came out on the DS and the 3DS. So I saw a copy of Call of Duty Modern Warfare Mobilized. Fairly cheap game, no idea if it plays well, but again, some of the first person shooters on the DS are actually kind of fun and sometimes a little unique. One of games had an Atari game that I didn't own and that's getting a little bit unusual uh, these days. I have most of the Atari games that I want, but they had a copy of River Raid 2, a game I did not own as a kid and I don't think I've played it very much. But again, when I saw a 2600 cartridge there that I didn't own, reasonable price, yeah, I'm picking it up. Here's a game that looks so familiar. I wonder if Reggie talked about it in a pickups video in the past or something like that. Uh, but I picked it up, I heard it's really good. It's called Trapped on the PlayStation 2. Now, I guess this is, well, this is part of a Japanese series called Deception. And this is technically, I think the fourth game in the series. I guess it's the sequel to a PlayStation 1 game. I'm not entirely sure what's going on because it's got several different names depending on what region you bought it in. Uh, but it looks pretty cool. So like, uh, looks like an action game, but it has strategy elements to it. Again, I haven't played it yet, so I'm not entirely sure. Uh, the guy that I bought it from at 1UP Games said it's, it's definitely a hidden gem. So we'll have to see. Pretty much my big pickup for this trip is Don Pachi. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, but basically when I saw this, I was like, oh yeah, baby. So this is a vertical scrolling shoot 'em up on the Sega Saturn made by one of my favorite developers that of course is Cave and published by Atlas. And so the thing is you just don't see a lot of physical shoot 'em ups for the Sega Saturn at retro gaming stores anymore. At least I don't. Most people who have these in their collections, they just they just hold on to them forever because they're so well loved. So yeah, when I saw this, I was like, I have to have it. I also picked up this kind of unusual PlayStation 1 game called Tale of the Sun. Now I've seen this cover before, but again, I'm not entirely sure if maybe this was a game that Reggie talked about. He's usually my PlayStation guy, um, but I've heard good things about this. It's supposedly very unique, a little bizarre, but I guess it's basically like an RPG, like a you play as a prehistoric man that's trying to build up your tribe. Uh, you're just trying to survive. So I don't know, it's just one of those games which seems like it might be kind of quirky and weird and kind of fun. Something to try if you just want to play something different. Here's a game I was pretty excited to find. It's called Counterforce on the Wii, but I believe it's actually a port of an arcade shooter called Exus. So basically this is an on-rail shooter where you play as a mech and you go around just basically blowing everything up. Now, I haven't played the original and I just got this game, so I'm not entirely sure what it's all about, uh, but I've heard actually that it is, again, one of these games where it kind of looks like a budget title and maybe people skipped it, but it's actually better than it looks. So I'm excited to check it out. Another game I was really excited to find is Barnyard Blast Swine of the Night. <laughs> this game looks like it'd be a bad budget title, but it's actually a really fun 2D run and gun shooter. I love discovering games like this, especially ones that are exclusive to a system like the Nintendo DS, and this was only $5. And then here's something I kind of took a chance on. You see it here called RPG Maker Fez. This is published by NIS America for the 3DS. And I'd never seen this before, so I guess it's a game or a program where it allows you to make your own games on the 3DS. I mean, that sounds kind of fun. 
So obviously I haven't had a chance to mess around with this yet, but I'd be really curious to know down in the comments if you have, and uh, if you have some pointers for it. This is the type of thing I can see where maybe just looking for something new and different. I was just like, okay, I'm gonna sit down and make a, a weird little RPG, like a heavy metal RPG or something like that. I mean, who knows? Anyways, guys, that is most of the pickups that I got while traveling down in the Phoenix, Arizona area. And I have to say, I just had a fantastic time, if you couldn't tell by all this footage. Uh, just a wonderful place to visit. Honestly, I could kind of see myself moving down there, uh, especially in the Sedona, maybe Flagstaff area, just because it's a little bit cooler down there. But man, I had a great time. You guys have an amazing retro gaming community down there and everyone was so incredibly nice. And your food was amazing too. Had some awesome Mexican food and you know, I already have some friends down there. So I just can't wait to go down and visit again. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and take care.